work through some of Photoshop's color correction techniques that we can use. The first one we're going to open up is the Salmon JPEG. Drag that into Photoshop. What we want to do is to set the white point for our image to be a true white. If I look at this, I can see it has a little bit of a green tinge to it. The tool we're going to use to get a good sample is our color sampler tool. It looks like the regular eyedropper tool, but it has a little crosshair at the top left-hand corner. Set your sample size to be a 3 by 3 average, and we're going to take two samples. The first one will be down here at the bottom left-hand corner, and the second one will be at the top right-hand corner right there. The next thing we need to have open is our info panel. I've got mine open, but if you don't see it, you can go to Window, choose Info, and here's what we're looking at. The Info panel will give you the RGB value of any area that you sample or you're over. And you can see our sample number one and number two gave us these two RGB values. Looking at these numbers, in order to make a white value, the reds, green, and blue all need to have roughly the same number. But I can tell that the green value is a little bit higher, about 10% higher, or 10 points higher on both of those, just as an average. So to correct this, we're going to go to Image, down to Adjustments, open up your color balance. The color balance will let you choose between your shadows, midtones, and highlights. Choose the highlights, choose the green magenta levels, and bring it down about negative 10. Say OK. Now I've got an image where my white point or my highlights are much, much more wider. Here it is before, here it is after. Let's say this is a TIFF. File, Save As. Choose TIFF. Hit Save. OK, and close that one out. Another way of doing it is by adjusting our curves. For this one, let's open up the Flan JPEG. Drag that into Photoshop. As with the other one, we want to make a point sample, this time at the bottom left-hand corner, right about there. Then we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, and choose Curves. There it is right here. <clears throat> Do make sure that Preview is turned on. And you can see right now our channel is set to RGB. Choose the red channel first. With red selected, I'm going to add a point along our red line right here at the three-quarter view, right about there. What we want to type in is in our info input value, the input value down here will be whatever your red value is. I can see mine is 232, so 232 will bring it down. And the output value needs to be the green filter. So output is going to, for us is going to be 214. That will curve that back up for that one. From here, we can also choose our blue channel. Set our input value to be about 215, and our output value to be around, excuse me, yeah, 215, and our output value to be around 214. That will bring that up a little bit. Excuse me, I made a mistake. The input value is 211. The output value should be 214. We'll say OK to this. Now we've got our color corrected image. We can go to File, Save As, and choose a TIFF. Close that one out, move on to the next one. Let's open the Pasta JPEG. And with this one, we can go to Edit, or Image, Adjustments, and adjust the curves. And let's set our black point. Click the Show Clipping, and this will turn everything white. And we want to drag this image until you can start to see pixels just appear onto our area. So I'm going to click on the arrow and drag. So right about here is when I can see little uh, bits of pixels start to appear on our image. And we can also adjust the white point by clicking on the white arrow, 
dragging that in until just a few start to appear on this image as well, right about there. Didn't have to drag it much to be able to see this image start to appear. We can turn off show clipping, bring our image back in, and to adjust the midtones, I'm going to click right about here at the three quarter view, and drag it down just slightly. If I go too far, you can see it gets too contrasting, but that'll make our darks just a little bit darker. Then I'm going to click on the upper three quarter and drag that up just a little bit. That'll bring back in our highlights. We'll say OK to that. And now our image has a good range of contrast using our levels. We can save this one, file, save as, a TIFF. Close it out, go on to the next ones. The next set of stages talks about defining your color settings. Before we open up anything, let's go to our color settings by going to Edit, down to Color Settings, and this will allow us to change how our images are being printed. We want to choose North American Progress or General Purpose Prepress 2, excuse me, North American Prepress 2 as our settings. In the working space under RGB, Adobe RGB 1998 is selected. Under the CMYK value, choose US Sheet Fed Coded. And we're going to leave the gray and spot working menu set to their defaults of 20%. In the color management policies, make sure RGB is turned off and preserve embedded profiles, CMRK, are all checked and preserved for that one. Everything else on this side will also remain the same. We're going to save this by going to Save. And this will automatically take us to our settings box and we'll call this menus. Now if you're working on a computer that's done this before, you probably have menus CSF already saved to there. If that's the case, you can always hit save and replace the one that's already there. Another dialog box will open up. You can just say OK to that. And then we'll click OK and return back to our menu. Now let's open up some photos and actually make our changes. We'll go to the salad JPEG. Now the reason we changed it is because some of the images that are shown on your screen don't print very well once they are sent to a printer. In order to, in order to correct this, we can actually proof the colors. Go up to View, choose Proof Colors, and when you toggle it on, you can see some of the areas will be nice and grayed out. If we go to View, we can turn proof colors off. Go back up to View and turn on Gamut Warnings. And you can actually see the gray area is where it's out of gamut. It can't be printed. Let's save our image as a Photoshop file. File and Save As. The format will be Photoshop. Choose Save. Let's go and open up our curves again. Image adjust curves. We'll set our white point highlight to be right here. Let's double click our white point eyedropper. So double click, that'll bring up our color picker. From here, let's type in the color picker values. Change the CMYK, which is over here, to be a C value of 5, M3. Y3 and 0 for your K. Say OK to that. The widest highlight on here that we want to maintain details, right around here on this edge. One click, you can see that brings in, that is the highlight. Let's set our black point. Double click on the black point edge. Type in a C and YK value of C, 80, M, 70, Y, and K is also going to be 70. Say OK to that. And we want to click our darkest value, which is right about here on our olive. That will set the dark points for that particular image. The remaining problems seem to be with our reds and a little bit in our greens. 
So let's adjust our channel to go to reds. We're going to add a point right in the middle by clicking on the little red line. I'm going to drag it downward to steepen that redness. You can see as I drag it down, a lot of my red starts to clean itself up. We also have issues with the green channel, so let's go to green. Again, click right in the middle and we'll steepen this one till our green channels fix themselves up as, as well. Once we're finished, we can click OK. Do you want to save the new target? Say yes. Now it's been saved and we can turn off our gamut warning. We'll save this image as a TIFF, File, Save As, choose TIFF, close it out. Final thing we'll need to do, let's open back up our salad image. Oops. Is to adjust our color mode. Go to Image, down to Adjustments, excuse me, Mode. Instead of working in RGB, choose CMYK. It'll ask you, are you sure you want to do this? We'll say OK to that. Now we can go to File, Save As. I've still got TIFF selected, and let's save this one as Salad CMYK TIFF. Close that out. Now let's move on to our final image. The last thing we want to create is an HDR image. They've given you a file folder with a variety of mil pictures. And some of these pictures are overexposed and some are underexposed. With no files open, let's go into Photoshop, go up to File, down to Automate, and choose Merge to HDR Pro. And this will open up a new dialog box that lets us browse and select our files. We can then choose Browse, find all of the mill photos. So we want to select all of these, say Open. When we click OK, it'll say Merge to Convert. You may lose some stuff. That's OK. Say OK to that. And we'll let it work through its magic of merging and blending all of these together. What it's doing is it's looking for all the lights and the dark pixels that create an HDR image. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range, and we want to have a good range of lights and darks, which is what this is allowing us to do. Now I want to be able to see my histogram, so we're going to change our mode from 16 to 32-bit, and that gives us a little histogram here. And of course we can adjust the lightness and darkness along this edge. The first thing we want to do is to remove the ghosts. This may take just a few seconds to do. Let's change our mode to 8-bit. We'll set our preview to photorealistic. Now it's just kind of a matter of playing around with some of the settings for the exposure, the radius, and the strength of our setting. I just want to be able to see some of the images. So let's change our exposure, make it a little bit brighter so I can see it. But I don't want to blow out everything. Perhaps our shadows can be brightened up a good bit. Make it a little bit more vibrant. Play around with the radius and also the strength. Once you get an image that you like, just playing around, say OK. This will finalize the process. And we want to save this as a mill merged Photoshop document. So go to File and Save. Mill merged. The format is Photoshop. Hit Save. And now we're finished. To turn all of these in, only upload the TIFF images that we created and the one Photoshop document of, of your HDR image.